This is a nugget and a half and it's got wings on it. I'm pretty sure everybody knows what this thing is. I'm pretty sure everybody and their mom knows what this thing is. I'm pretty sure everybody and their cat knows what this thing is. If by some insane coincidence you don't know what this thing is, allow me to break it down for you. This is the zombie strike crossfire bow and I'm actually filming this in the nerf room because that room is 94 degrees and I can't take it. I have a limit. So for a while until we can get the air conditioner fixed, you're going to be seeing videos on this couch instead of the white one that I'm used to using. So with that said, why am I reviewing this? Simply put, I feel like it. This was the first big Nerf Blaster I ever got. I got it all the way back in 2014, and it was the biggest deal imaginable when I first got it. I loved this thing so much, I didn't know what to say about it, and I made a video on my iPhone 5 talking about how it was the best blaster ever. And of course my opinion has stood up the test of time. This totally isn't the most nuggety blaster in the entire world that's super big and only shoots four darts. Wait a second. Wait, that is a T-pole. Wait a minute. Wait a minute! No! This was the start of it! How? How? How is this possible? I've had this thing for so many years and I've never realized that. I... What? Hasbro! What is wrong with you? I mean, now I have to finish the video because we're already here. You can already tell exactly what it's gonna do, but uh Let's just, let's just start with the design. You can kind of tell just by looking at it, it doesn't look the best. It looked all right when it came out and I still think it looks okay. I mean, the bow arms have some nice detailing on them. I think that they merge with the shape pretty well. And I think that overall the blaster has a pretty balanced kind of retro future style design. But at the same time, it's really, really simplistic. But I honestly don't mind the design. If anything, it's just really nostalgic to me because this was the first kind of big blaster that I ever got. If we go to the ergonomic, this grip is actually really good. It's very nice, very smooth, very filleted, and very thick with plastic. The trigger pull feels very nice. Look at the way that it just merges into the shape of the shell. That's a cool detail. And the spring in there is very nice and responsive. The trigger has a snap, a punch to it when you fire it. It feels powerful, like the Centurion. Because of the overall shape of this blaster, you can use kind of this part as the foregrip or just put your hand on the front of the blaster however you want. It doesn't really matter because it's not mandatory. The blaster is light enough and small enough that you can still use it as a pistol, which is actually pretty cool. And if you do want to have it as a primary style blaster, if you're out of your mind, you can have a stock attachment point on the back so you can put Nerf stocks on it, which is always a fun detail and always a welcome one in my opinion. I don't know why there just aren't very many zombie strike blasters that have stock attachment points. Why is that not the case? So how does it work? Well, you load in four darts at the front, you use this T-pole, and you pull it back, and then you fire once. It doesn't have slam fire. Here's one thing I'd like to comment. It's a T-pole. It sucks. But this T-pole is actually made very well. It's very smooth to pull back. It locks reliably. It doesn't jiggle. It feels very solid. Unlike all of the T-pole blasters of the current generation, this actually feels nice to pull back. This is the only time I've ever genuinely liked a T-pole. Like, I like this T-pole. That's a feat. And that's also my cue to do the firing demo. Obviously, smart AR blaster, the bottom one's gonna shoot worse than the top one. I'm just gonna shoot these like a pistol. So what do I think of this thing? Is it really as bad as people make it out to be considering that it's gigantic and it only fires four darts? Yes. Yes, it is, but it's actually good at its job. It works for the same reason that the Mega Double Breach does. It's not practical, but it looks great, and it's good at what it's trying to be. And this thing is just a big clunky crossbow that you're going to take because it looks cool and it's fun to play with, not for the performance market, because the performance is actually, wait a minute, the performance is actually decent. Yeah, funny enough, there's actually nothing wrong with this at all. It's just a mediocre concept played out in a mediocre way. Although it would really be hard to take a concept like this and make it actually good. The best thing that we got was the Quadrot. And even then, that is a super mediocre blaster at the best. This blaster kind of embraces how ridiculous it is by giving you the bow arms and making it look like something Daryl Dixon would want to use. Like a lot of these reviews, I can't offer a purchase link for one of these, even though I don't really recommend buying one unless you really want this design for some reason, though it, it, it's a blaster. I kind of like it. I kind of don't. It's mid, and it's always been mid, and I don't play with it much. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.